We are now going to move on and continue photographing the floor if there are reactions. What was the right limit a few moments ago must now become the left limit in the current frame so that we can advance little by little to process the entire floor. The blood stains were not visible, which is why we are using this product. But the value of proceeding, as we have just done, is that we can see they have a specific shape, which will certainly be useful for the person doing the blood stain pattern analysis afterwards. The shape of the blood stains will certainly tell us what was used to clean the scene. If it was a sponge, we can determine its characteristics. So we can identify which tool was used to clean. For example, a brush. If the blood stains are very light, because the zone was cleaned very thoroughly, the luminescence is weaker and we need more darkness to reveal these traces. But it's good to have a compromise between this semi-darkness and a little light because it is always essential to be able to create a photograph of both the luminescence itself and the zone where it was discovered. If we were in pitch darkness, we would not know whether the trace was on the floor or a wall. The settings between semi-darkness and light should vary during any treatment of the scene. We have just worked near a window. Even though the blinds are closed, residual light enters. The zone will be a little brighter than a zone in the room that is completely hidden from any light source. Such as behind a desk or behind a bed, where it will be darker. In contrast, at the bottom of a door, the gap under the door will let in a lot of light and may harm the quality of the picture. These light and dark adjustments must be made throughout the course of the scene. The photographer must always think of it and say, I have a little more light here, so I will have a shorter exposure time. Or say, I am in an area that is a bit too dark, so I'll need a longer exposure time. 